Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that orderest his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Oh, yes. We're working on our conversation every minute, aren't we? I don't know how many times a day that I go, wish I hadn't said it that way. Wish, wish I had done something different. But then he's calling us out of the fire of the furnace. He's perfecting us, burning off all that needs to go, right? Check out Kathy's graphics. She has some beautiful ones and they are so encouraging. You will enjoy them. Welcome to reading the Word of God with me. I am so excited. I'm looking at all your names, all you precious, precious sons and daughters on this September 25th. We will be reading from Isaiah chapter 45, clear through 48. So I better hustle on and get going. I hope that you will find that place. Isaiah chapter 45, picking up with verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, ask of me things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. You command me. I have made the earth and created man on it. I, my hands, stretched out the heavens and all of their host I have commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and let my exiles go free. Not for price, not for price or reward, says the Lord of hosts. And thus says the Lord, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Cush and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over to you and they shall be yours. They shall walk behind you. They shall come over in chains <clears throat> and they shall bow down to you. They will make supplication to you saying, surely God is in you. And there is no other, there is no other God. Wouldn't it be wonderful that they're going to receive that revelation? Truly, you are God who hides yourself. O God of Israel, the Savior, they shall be ashamed and also disgraced, all of them. They shall go in confusion together who are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. Kathy says she just got the notice that I was on. And I notice uh, the counting number is not moving on my page. Are you receiving me? Let me know. Let me know. I, um, I am going to read Isaiah 45, verse 18. Let me know if you hear it. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it. I'm getting some thumbs up, so I, I'm assuming you're telling me. <laughs> who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain. Oh, these are all great words here. These are great words. Thank you, Yolinda. Yes, Miss Sharon, okay. Who formed it to be inhabited. Inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, Seek me in vain. He wouldn't do that, would he? I, the Lord, speak righteousness. 
I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together. You who have escaped from the nations, they have no knowledge who carry the wood of their carved image and pray to a God that cannot save. Tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me. And oh my goodness, that is, that is really the subject of this whole portion of Isaiah. It is truly the subject. Wow. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord, and there is no other God besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. And so, you know, if you're seeking, if you're trying to look for the Lord in many other things, you have to pray to him. You have to repent. You have to say a simple prayer and you, you ask him to forgive you for your sins, and he will, and he will wash them away. You will know it. You will sense it. It will be like a burden lifted. And he wants you to come to him. And he wants you to come to love his word. That's why we're doing this. So let's continue on. Verse 22. Look to me and be saved. And I just told you how simple it is to do. All you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and it shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. He shall say, surely in the Lord, I have righteousness and strength. To him men shall come and all shall be ashamed who are incensed against him. In the Lord, all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. And we move right along to chapter 26. Baal bows down. Nebo stoops. Their idols were on the beast and on the cattle. Their, your carriages were heavily loaded. A burden to the weary beast. They stoop. They bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but have themselves gone into captivity. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb, even to your old age, I am he. <clears throat> and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. Woo! I take that as a personal word, y'all. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we should be alike? They lavish gold out of the bag and they weigh silver on the scales <clears throat> they hire a goldsmith, and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves. Yes, they worship. They bear it on their shoulder. They carry it, and they set it in its place, and it stands. Are you getting the picture? If you can pick it up and put it where you want it, it's not a god to help you. It's, it's a molded image. It's a, it's a piece of wood or painted or whatever it is. From its place, it shall not move. Though one cries out to it, yet it cannot answer nor save him out of his trouble. Remember this and show yourselves men. Recall to mind, O oh, you transgressors, 
Remember the former things of old, for I am. How many times have we heard that now? I am. I am that I am is who God said he was. For I am, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted who are far from righteousness. I bring my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger. And I will place salvation in Zion, Zion, for Israel, my glory. And we move along to chapter 47 of Isaiah. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. <clears throat> Remove your veil. Take off your skirt, uncover your thigh, pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yes, your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not arbitrate with a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was angry with my people. I have profaned my inheritance and given them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the elderly you laid your yoke very heavily, and you said, I shall be a lady forever, so that you did not take these things to heart, nor remember the latter end of them. Therefore, hear this now, you who are given to pleasures, who dwell securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one else besides me, I shall not sit as a widow, nor shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your sorceries for the great abundance of your enchantments. For you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have warped you. And you have said in your heart, I am. And there is no one else besides me. Therefore, evil shall come upon you you shall not know from where it arises, and trouble shall fall upon you. You will not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which you shall not know. Stand now with your enchantments and the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to profit. Perhaps you will prevail. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let how the astrologers 
the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from what shall come upon you. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to sit before. Thus shall they be to you with whom you have labored, your merchants from your youth. They shall wander, each one to his quarter. No one shall save you. And we move along to chapter 48. <clears throat> Hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel, and have come forth from the wellsprings of Judah, who swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, or not in righteousness. For they call themselves after the holy city, and they lean on the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning. They went forth from my mouth, and I caused them to hear it. Suddenly I did them, and they came to pass because I knew that you were obstinate and your neck was in an iron sinnoh and your brow bronze. Even from the beginning, I have declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I proclaimed it to you. Lest you should say, my idol has done them and my carved image and my molded image have commanded them. You have heard, see all this, and will you not declare it? I have made you hear new things from this time, even hidden things. You did not know them. They are created now and not from the beginning. And before this day, you have not heard them. Lest you should say, of course I knew them. Surely you did not hear. You did not know. Surely from long ago, your ear was not opened. For I knew that you would deal very treacherously and were called a transgressor from the womb. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger, and for my praise I will restrain it from you, so that I do not cut you off. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction for my own sake, for my own sake. I will do it. For how should my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. Ooh, wow. Hang on to that last sentence. And I will not give my glory to another. Wow. That was powerful. All right. Let's move right along to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I, Paul says, therefore a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God 
and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says from Psalm 68, verse 18, 68, 18, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Wow. Went down to hell, went down to the lower parts, took those captivities, and he ascended on high. Now this, the words, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some, some people, some of the people, back, back then when Paul's writing it, and now. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And he's calling these people saints and they're alive. You don't get called a saint in this New Testament after you're dead. They called them saints because they were walking after Christ. <clears throat> for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into all things, into him who is the head, Christ. Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working <clears throat> by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Oh, y'all. <clears throat> That's what he does. That's what he gives. Look at that list there. Each one of us fit in on that list somewhere within the body of Christ. This chapter is personal for you. Personal. Put a marker there. Read it, read it again later. Put your name in there. Put your name in there. Make it personal. <clears throat> All right, we have begun Psalm 68, and we will pick up with verse 19. Psalm 68, 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Selah. Think on that. Prostrate. Spend time. Our God is the God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong escapes from death. Escapes from death. But God will wound the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of the one who still goes on in his trespasses. The Lord said, I will bring back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea that your foot may crush them in blood and the tongues of your dogs 
may have their portion from your enemies. They have seen your procession, O oh God, <clears throat> the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers went before, the players on instruments followed after. Among them were the maidens playing timbrels. Bless God in the congregations, the Lord from the fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin, their leader, their leader, the princes of Judah and their company, the princes of Zebulon and the princes of Nephtali. Your God has commanded your strength. Strengthen, O oh God, what you have done for us because of your temple at Jerusalem. Kings will be, they will bring presents to you. Rebuke the beasts of the reeds, the herd of bulls and with the calves of the people till everyone submits himself with pieces of silver. Scatter the peoples who delight in war Envoys will come out of Egypt. Ethiopia will quickly stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Oh, sing praises to the Lord. Selah. To him who rides on the heaven of heavens, which were of old. Indeed, he sends out his voice a mighty voice, ascribe strength to God. His excellence is over Israel and his strength is in the clouds. Oh God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Oh, that's a powerful song. That is just awesome. All right, y'all, we wrap it up with Proverbs chapter 24, verses 3 and 4. Proverbs chapter 24, 3 and 4. Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So we have wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That's what we're after. <clears throat> but we're after his wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Not ours. Let this rich, wonderful word line your thoughts in the way you decide things, the way you look at the world in general, the way you look at your own personal life, the way you look at your family, your friends. Let this rich, wonderful word be so ingrained in your heart that those are the kind of words that come out. That's what I'm after. And I know that's what you're after. Wisdom to build your house. Understanding to get it established. Knowledge. Fill up the rooms with all precious and pleasant riches. Right? Y'all? Right? Okay. What a wonderful thing to feel your presence, and to feel the presence of the Lord. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Father God, you thrill our souls and our spirits, our bodies. You even, you heal them while we spend time in your word. You encourage and uplift the depressed person. You bring joy where there was such discouragement. We rebuke all those things of the devil 
They're all spirits. We rebuke discouragement. We rebuke confusion. We rebuke fatigue. Name your battles. Name the spirits that try to take you down. You have authority over them. And we want to thank you today, Lord, for that. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you that our minds can be renewed in your word. Our spirits and our souls can be uplifted. Your strength, we, we, strength has been mentioned so many times today, Father. Thank you for that. I could use some new strength. And so I'm concentrating on that. Jesus, we just want to declare we love you. You're, you are awesome. I mean, we just don't even know how to describe you in glorious enough words. You went to the cross, suffered all that you did just for you, for you, for me. Suffered like no one else ever suffered. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you again, fresh and new today. Thank you for sending us, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, <clears throat> bring us great understanding. Lead us and guide us and show us. What is this day supposed to be, Holy Spirit? We might have thoughts that aren't, aren't going to happen. They aren't right. Wait until you have an assurance in your spirit what you're to do, where you're to go, what you're to say. Maybe you're to stay absolutely put. Show us, Lord, please. We pray to you. We pray and ask Holy Spirit to be sent to us, to reveal what we need in our lives. Father God, we hold up Israel. We hold up your people. <clears throat> you are doing this incredible thing, bringing them home. They call it making Aliyah living again, once again, on the land. You promised them, picking up, packing up, leaving where they are, coming home, being part of establishing Israel in our day and age. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> thank you for showing us. Thank you for including us. Truly, you are making one new man, Jew and Gentile. We are excited about that, Lord. We'd ask that you'd bring peace to Jerusalem, peace to Israel. Cause them, Lord, to bring forth all kinds of knowledge and wisdom that you will give them and it will benefit the world. They are on the cutting edge because you have chosen them. So Lord, we pray for them. We pray for America. Lord, <clears throat> it looks like you're taking America down some. But then there are great battles coming. So, Lord, we know that you are doing a work. We might not understand it all, but we're asking you, Lord, to help us to understand. Don't let us miss it, Lord. Don't let us miss what you have for us, what you would like us to do and say the things you would like us to do. Help us, Lord. Help America not to cast you away, not to walk away from the Jewish people. Lord, <clears throat> I pray, and I can't pray negatively. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. All God's people cried a hearty, Amen. Love you. Bye-bye.